Hi guys, welcome to Martin Made. My name is Stephanie and today I'm going to tell you a little bit about my epilepsy journey. Now in March in Canada, it is Epilepsy Awareness Month and so I would like to share my journey to help make it more aware for um, other people about epilepsy. I mean, epilepsy, one in 10 people will have a seizure at least once in their lifetime. Um, one out of 26 people will be diagnosed with epilepsy. Now, um, I happen to be one out of 26 and I have epilepsy and I have struggled with it over the years. There's some pretty crazy epilepsy statistics and until you start looking into it a lot more, um, you don't actually realize it, but 470,000 children are epileptic in just the U.S. alone. There is always a need to know how to give proper first aid to someone with epilepsy. I know this in my own personal experience. It's, I've had a few times where I have had a seizure and people just haven't known what to do and then they call 911 and then I end up in the hospital with a huge medical bill when I didn't need to go to the hospital. And so that is one thing that can be misconstrued in society. You don't always have to call 911 for a person who has a seizure. Another statistic is that epilepsy actually receives less funding than any other brain disorder. 10 times less funding than any other brain disorder. And so there's a lot of people out there that don't actually get good treatment because there's not as much funding to do as much research as has been done for other brain um, disorders. So I just want to share a little bit of first aid. Now, when someone has a seizure and you are right there, you don't always have to call 911. The one thing that I had happen a couple of times was death. People would call 911 and it's like you go to the hospital, you end up with a massive medical bill for something that you already knew, okay, I'll have the seizure, I just need to sleep off the side effects from it and then I'm fine, I can get going about my day. But the there are times to call 911. So if that person has another condition, so say that person is pregnant or say that person is um, diabetic, say that person has a heart problem. Those are some reasons to call 911 if they were to have a seizure. Another reason would be if their seizure lasts more than five minutes, um, if they have more than one seizure, those are a couple of reasons to call 911. Another reason to call the, an ambulance is if they've never had a seizure before, their body might be warning them saying, oh, there's something that's not right here. You should um, get it taken care of. And so their body goes into a seizure as kind of a warning sign saying something's not right here. And so that is a reason to call 911. If they get hurt during a seizure or if by chance they are in a pool or in the tub, um, you need to call 911 because they need to make sure no water got into their lungs and um, make sure they're okay. And so those are times to call 911. If by chance they have that and none of those are things take place or are wrong, then don't call 911. Stay with a person that's having a seizure. Stay with them until they are completely out of it, until they are conscious enough to make words and to talk to you and, and everything. 
comfort that person. It's going to be hard on that person. They're going to be scared. They are going to have, I instantly go into um, depression mode um, because I have a lot of other things that are linked to if I have a seizure, then this is going to happen. 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 I know that, but it's very distressing at that point. Um, at the beginning, before they get too conscious, one thing that I always love when people have done, wipe the blood off my face. It's it's a little considerate, more considerate than me having to go into the bathroom and see blood all over my face. So just take a cloth and get that blood off of their face. It's just something that I, I, I think is considerate. Try to comfort the person and check for a medical band or someone to contact or anything, stay calm, and then get them a ride home, whether it's a taxi or some you call somebody that they can come and get them. Um, try to do that. Um, with a tonic-clonic seizure, this is going to be the one that scares a lot of people because it's big and it's very noticeable. And so my suggestion would be to just, when you hear them cry out, and they're going to fall, try to ease them to the floor. Help them get to the floor easily. If you don't get there in time, check their head. Make sure they haven't hurt themselves in another way. Make sure they haven't bit their lip. I've got a spot where I bit my lip right here. I had to get stitches there. Um, I ended up hitting the rail of our, on the outside of our house, I hit the rail, and I got this huge black eye, it instantly swelled up with a black eye. And so certain things like that, just if you notice where they've hit something, call 911. Um, but those things, if you don't see anything visibly wrong with them, wait till they come to. And if they seem kind of out of it, then you want to call 911 because maybe they have a concussion and they're just kind of loopy from that. And so um, get them on their side while they're in the middle of the seizure. So as you're laying them down, try to get them to go to their side because that's gonna help them breathe. Their tongue goes limp, and if they're on their back, their tongue goes to the back of their throat, and they can't breathe, and they suffocate to death. So get them to their side. Um, another area is to get anything away from them that they might bump or hit, whether it's sharp or whatnot, just get it away from them. Um, and then also remove any kind of glasses clear around their neck, make sure they don't have anything tight around their neck, and then kind of clear that all away. Um, keep track of how long they've been in that seizure, because like I said, if it goes longer than five minutes, you need to get an ambulance there. So keep track on your watch, on your phone, whatever, keep track of how long they have been in that seizure. And so this is the first aid part of helping somebody with seizures.